founders. And uh, today we have to talk about how we can use hardware to increase the adoption of decentralized technologies like, like Ethereum. So, uh, first, first of all, I would like to give a glimpse to the overview of the evolution of uh, computation and hardware machines. And uh, some time ago, we, we had uh, this big computer that uh, takes a room like this one. And uh, after we started to prove the technology, we managed to have small devices and start to, to appear in offices and uh, in our homes. homes. Um, so we, we started using for uh, automatic application, for developing maybe a game. And uh, after that, internet come to our lives and things, uh, everything. Uh, we start using uh, an, an, another kind of applications, and uh, the devices become even uh, smaller. To finally achieve the current situation in which we are start using the, the cloud. The thing is, the cloud uh, is a uh, important uh, advance. It takes a lot of benefits to us, like for example, uh, we can avoid this kind of, kind of accidents because right now we have all the data distributed around the, uh, around the world. All of us uh, know all the benefits of uh, the cloud and um, for example, we can make easy um, escalate, escalate uh, our application or uh, make uh, the application is extremely portable, so now the, the computation happens uh, into the cloud, not in our device, making it possible yeah, that's to, to switch between devices and all the stuff. But uh, the truth about the cloud is that there is no cloud, there's someone else's computer. Um, it can be even uh, worse. There is no cloud, just a computer of some big corporation. And this is very important. For, for people like us, uh, developers, since we are developing uh, decentralized technologies, and if we use these decentralized technologies in a centralized manner, we are losing all the benefit that we are getting for, for, for getting that. So we, we lost privacy, anonymity, anonymity. Uh, uh, we uh, rely on three parties, and uh, it, this defeats the purpose of um, of these technologies, so we should start to worry about that. So we believe that we need to increase the adoption of, uh, of the hardware layer. Uh, we need to recover the control, uh, maybe not all the control, but at least one part of, the, of it, and recover this freedom that we had when, when we, we, we have this computer at home. And the question about that is, is that possible? Uh, and we, we believe that it's possible. Right now people are buying devices, they are putting this kind of hardware, this speaker, at home. And, or for example, uh, top, uh, set top box or other kind of devices, so the people are willing to put in hardware at home. So, uh, as we can see, for example, uh, right now there are uh, 14, 5 million of uh, smart speaker, speaker in the United States. So imagine that we have the same number of zero nodes, it's going to be crazy in the centralization, right? But here the question is, this uh, smartphone, uh, uh, sorry, these uh, voice assistants uh, are start to grow a lot, but the people know that these, uh, these devices are not uh, right. They are, they use your data, they, they know all about you, they, they can, uh, uh, listen, you having sex, and the people know this this information. They they are aware of this, but they still buy these surveillance devices, and they are put it at home. Uh, the question is why? Well, that where is convenience. This is the point. I mean, they are willing to lose privacy if you give somebody. If they don't want to be worried about spending time completing, uh, they only want convenience. So. Let's take a look uh, if a uh, zero node is convenient. So, if we take a, a look about the, the, the numbers, how many times it uh, takes to synchronize a node right now, uh, this is more or less the number that we are 
moving right now by the text um, 10, 12 hours and get 18 hours. And even uh, the amazing work of the Peter from the Trim Foundation is making possible in the last version to uh, 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 synchronize the nodes in the half of time. Maybe this is not, this is not enough. This is, I mean, this is not very convenient. It's just uh, one pain thing, I mean, just one time, but it's not very convenient. We can't live with that, but we, we should improve this. Now let's take a look to the hard drives. Uh, the first thing that uh, we need to realize is that we need an SSD. The last version of GET allows you to split the chain in between um, an SSD and a hard drive, but even uh, it's more convenient because you can have a, um, a, 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 a hardware with less requirement. Yeah, that uh, means that it's more it's harder to to start. So at the end, you lose part of the convenience. And if we take a look to the numbers. We can see that right now, uh, full node Ethereum is around 200 gigabytes on both clients, more or less, and the growing is around uh, 7 or 8 gigabytes every month. The question here, here is in uh, June uh, 20, the, the size of the chain is going to be around 270 gigabytes. And that is an uh, important thing because we are moving to a new tier of hard drives. The thing here is right now we can put a simple node in less than 250 uh, gigabytes, but in January and uh, June next year it's gonna be that's gonna be uh, it's gonna be impossible. So if we take a look to the numbers, uh, if we if we check uh, how much it's gonna cost you to maintain a simple node uh, in uh, June next year, these are the numbers. Uh, I read an article uh, about how to run a full node on Raspberry Pi. I spoke that it's possible. So that means that in uh, June uh, you are going to pay around 160 dollars for having a full node in right at the home. It's not too much. But if you check uh, what happens if you uh, are willing to do that in a BPS, uh, that means that you, need, uh, you are going to uh, pay. 660 dollars for maintaining the Ethereum node. So the conclusion of all this, all this number is uh, that no, running an Ethereum node is not is not convenient. I don't want to make a trade-off of Ethereum. It's just uh, put the number into the table to find a solution to this situation. I mean, if you have um, uh, uh, the worry about the privacy, you maybe have enough motivation to run a Ethereum node at home, uh, or if you are philosophically aligned with the Postbus. But a lot of people are not willing to do that because uh, run a Ethereum node costs money and takes time. So we need to find a solution to this, uh, to this problem. And one of the, the, the problems that this situation is, gonna, uh, is, is, is happening is that right now, we are losing around 10 or 9% of the number of nodes every month. And we believe that it's even worse when uh, this uh, Ethereum growing happens because according to several uh, scrappers, uh, there are around 65% uh, uh, of the nodes are running BPS. So since it's uh, more expensive than running at home, we expect that the number of nodes are going to increase. So, how do we let people to run their own hardware and increase the number of nodes? We we think that uh, there is three takeaways. The first, the first one is convenience. Uh, we need to improve convenience. That is is a must. Uh, we know that people want easy solutions and is the way to to achieve the the mass adoption of these kind of technologies. So the situation right now is um, people, not just Ethereum, and nodes in general, uh, they have, they have uh, quite good instruction, but you need to be a DevOps to understand it. Um, and the thing is, uh, even if you are a DevOps, you don't want to waste your time understanding all this stuff. That is, it takes a lot of your time and you, need, uh, you want to spend your time on other things. 
And the other thing that is happening right now is a lot of projects are uh, trying to put their project in the Raspberry Pi. That's very cool. It's awesome because you are trying to lower the spec. But the thing that is happening right now is uh, you find a good project, you put into into your Raspberry Pi, and after after a while you find another cool project and you remove the previous one. So at the end, after a week, maybe you switch three times of projects. And uh, this is like a proof of text. I mean, you try a project and to move uh, move to another one. You are not uh, making the network more resilient. Yeah, you are just trying uh, uh, projects. And we cannot expect people buying several Raspberry Pi at home, putting a lack of Raspberry Pi because this is for big people only. And this not helps that option. This is not convenient at all. The next, uh, the next one is privacy. Well, we, we saw that privacy is not uh, uh, one of the most important things for, for the other people. They are willing to, to lose that. But they, they know that this can be important. The people are, are starting to realize that privacy is something that we should care. And if you offer a, a solution that takes care of your privacy, is going to be more convenient than another one that is not. So we should uh, put in uh, privacy solution by default because people understand that the privacy is over. And finally, the key point is the integration, it's the last piece. I mean, if you have a not very convenient solution and you add privacy, it's well, a little more convenient, but if you add integration, you can compensate this lack of, uh, of convenience. So since we are creating tools that allow to transfer in value, we can create, uh, we can put integration model on top, on top of, of, of this. So for example, this is a Ethereum 2.0, some sum up of the, of the integration model. And if you take a look, uh, if we have one million uh, it's validated, that means that we need to have around 30,000 nodes running. Uh, right now we are uh, around 6,000, so we need to put a lot of integration to have this number happen. That is why you can see that number, that uh, I mean, uh, the return rate for validators is around 80%. But uh, when more people come to the, to the system, the integration goes lower. Uh, so the thing that can happen is that at some point it's not convenient or it's not enough convenient to run a proof of stake on, or maybe yes, but why not to put all the integration model on top of that? If you add the integration of model of proof of stake to other uh, integration, integration model like storage, that you can get some reward for sharing your hard drive your bandwidth, bandwidth, you can um, make more convenient. At the end, we can create a kind of a stack of integration in the same uh, in the same place. So we can add even Ethereum uh, two uh, Ethereum one uh, integration model on top of it. Or why not ISEC, for example, another another uh, integration model that uh, help you to create a main place of computation. At the end, we are building kind of uh, worldwide uh, computer. And um, using these uh, technologies to, um, to create a kind of peer-to-peer -peer economy is going to help us to, to be able to, um, to put these devices, this technology, in the, the hands of people. So mainly the idea is if we make easy for every kind of user to use these technologies, maybe even if they are not digitalized, they are going to put this hardware at home and maintain the network, help us to create together this uh, this new system. <coughs> so the conclusion is we need to put these three pieces together. We need to make convenience, take care of privacy, and have a distribution model, and put all in the same place. So we can translate this um, this in one <coughs> sentence. We need privacy enhancing uh, enhancing money boxes that are useful and convenient for the user. Uh, if we put all together, we make a really convenient solution. Uh, it's a way to, uh, to achieve, uh, maybe not the mass adoption, but at least that people 
they start to using and uh, start to understand these new technologies and help to to make more of it. So that is why uh, in Denmark we started uh, around uh, one year ago or, or so to provide these kind of solutions. Um, we 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 added into the model. We make it easy to install it, but we we add more things. We we start to put um, the knowledge like SDX um, into the to to be able to be used for the projects. So at the end is we we are creating a platform in which projects can uh, can use and can uh, start to distribute its content and help other to construct, to build power for the ecosystem. So, for example, we can start to add identity or uh, even use projects like data font that help you to uh, obtain data uh, selling. Or we can start to put other new technologies on top of that. For example, you can add add domains and at the end, put all the pieces together to, to build a bigger ecosystem. <coughs> um, if you want to know, ma know more about us, you can join uh, to our community. We uh, we created this project, an open source project. We get the uh, for raising from uh, the Ethereum Foundation and Aramon and Ethereum Money Fund. And at the end, we believe this uh, project is something for the community, uh, since we can we uh, uh, we think that we can help other projects to create a uh, bigger ecosystem. So, thank you. is on the storage size. Um, yeah. Am I correct in sort of believing that the uh, blockchain is a linear growth model or do you expect it to be exponential in the storage needs? Uh, well, there is some... If we... Uh, and I should just say the reason I'm asking uh, is, yeah, is because, and feel free to repeat the question if you want for it. Um, so the, uh, the reason is that, you know, disk space and disk cost is expected to have exponential properties. So where, you know, what would the curves look like over the six years and where will it project over the next two to three? Yeah, well, the, the thing uh, about the hard drive uh, specification, I think there are some projects, some clients that are more, uh, working on, uh, on that uh, increase uh, the growing of the, of the chain, for example, TurboGet that is uh, working on uh, archive nodes. Uh, they are going to publish uh, in the next weeks some kind of uh, new new running mode. So I think the idea, I mean, when Ethereum to an out comes and other solution, they are going to split the chain. So the work on the speed is going to be no, it, the, the, it's it's going to be not exponential. It's going to be constant because you are going only to store some part of the network. Yeah, yeah. No, but I was just using the way you did it was you were talking about the growth of the node and even like yeah. Alexi as well. Like, I thought the growth of the Ethereum storage, not what's active, but what's been historically done, is linear. Yeah. yeah and yeah. so that thought process, whenever I talk with Alexi, is always like, well, disk space is improving exponentially with respect to cost. So that aspect is not the critical one. Like, disks will continue to be larger than they need to be just for the, you know, backup storage. It's the active data set that Alexi's working on because you have to be able to do S storage and S loads to it. Yeah, it's, uh, I think it's, I, I mean, this is a uh, short, short term, oh, short term expectation. I mean, if, for the future, I cannot guess what is going to happen. It's going to be hard. This is, I mean, it's just six months. In six months, we are quite sure that this is the, the expectation of the, of the Ethereum clients. For the future, I mean, uh, the thing is, we we can think about the um, the uh, the price of the hardware is going to decrease with the with the year. So at the end, is we can guess that we we I, yeah. My, my thing is that uh, it's not going to be a big deal in the future, but it's growing slowly. Yeah, and just to confirm, the only incentive on the monetary side of the money boxes is the mining reward, or do you have another one? Ma uh, the sorry. Well, the incentive uh -huh. running the money box, it was just based on the mining rewards? Uh, yeah, well, the idea is, I mean, the idea to put uh, several uh, uh, 
proof of stake uh, uh, projects or um, at the end it's uh, oh yeah proof of stake mining, of the yeah, mining yeah. But it's, it's a block of work based yeah it's, it's yeah, that's it's com combine all the projects. I mean, for example, a file going is a project that uh, yeah. you so that is to put all together. So, do you feel? I mean, how what what do you think is like the capex, opex, and the expected return on any of these types of platforms? Yeah, that, that is dependent on the project. I mean, we are creating the platform to allow that project to to be able to be started. So, but the, the, the this incentivization model model depends on the project. At the end, they need to research about what is the, the correct amount of the reward and what are the expectations. I mean, we are only uh, preparing a platform in which they can be installed, but we cannot. Uh, we are not putting any kind of uh, limitation or any kind of. Uh, yeah, limitation to the to the okay. so they they need to be. Yeah. Thank you. Um, big round of applause for the <laughs>